morning everybody and what a glorious morning it is. I'm here in Alpe in France on a snowboarding holiday with my son Lars and we're having an absolutely fab time. You can see the weather behind me and the mountains and it's just absolutely glorious. It snowed all day yesterday so we didn't get out at all because the visibility was poor but we're hoping to have a fantastic day today because the snow is now just about perfect. So I'm going to show you around Alpe d'Huez and the French Alps um, while I'll be trotting around today and then a little bit later on I want to talk to you about something that I know a lot of you struggle with and that's writer's block. I've got some tips and strategies and advice for helping you overcome writer's block if that's something that you uh, struggle with, that blank piece of paper that you can't just seem to fill and um, hopefully it will help. Anyway, I'm off to do some snowboarding and I'll speak to you later. Have fun guys! Great morning we've just had. We snowboarded all the way from the chalet to somewhere quite high. I've got absolutely no idea where we are. I just follow my son and he tells me which piece to take and I do my best to get down them. So anyway, we've just stopped for coffee and I thought I'd just jump on here quickly to um, do my first little tip about writer's block. And it's quite an easy one to do really, and that is to go somewhere inspiring, which is where I am now. I absolutely love the mountains. It's my favorite place to be and I just find it really inspiring. I brought a notepad with me and when I get to the back to the chalet on a night I make quite a few notes about what I've done, what I've seen, how I feel and just sort of get my creative juices flowing a little bit and I find that then I can, I can write a little easier because we all suffer from writer's block obviously it's not just um, people who don't write very often even me, you know, people like me who write for a living can um, struggle sometimes so just get a little bit of inspiration from somewhere, anything that that you like doing really, that will give you that little nudge. So for me, it's been in the mountains, but obviously that's not possible every day. Um, it's only a once a year thing for me. But there are lots of other things you could do. Um, you know, I, I enjoy um, riding horses. I enjoy a nice cup of Earl Grey. I enjoy um, a good boxer size class, anything really that's gonna get you inspired, just to you know, get your juices flowing and get some things down on paper. So my first tip is have a think about what inspires you and see if you can do more of it when you're having to write and see if you can get those juices flowing. Anyway, I'm going to get this coffee now and I'll speak to you again in a bit.
So there you go, I'm now back from my holiday. I really wish I could have recorded this while I was there actually because it's such a beautiful place and I thought that would have been quite good fun. But sadly I couldn't get the sound to work properly. I didn't have my microphone with me and strangely enough that helps a quite a noisy place with people skiing past and snowboarding past and shouting and laughing and falling over every two minutes. So I've waited till I got home and um, I'm doing it now. So as I explained in my little intro, I want to talk to you today about writer's block because it's something that I talk to people about a lot. Um, writer's block is quite an old fashioned word, I guess. It's just when people are struggling to get the words down and it's as simple as that. You stare at a blank piece of paper or a blank screen and they can't think what to write. Or they start writing and then just trash it all and start again and it all gets a bit messy. But it doesn't need to be like that. Um, there are some easy techniques to put into place to help you and I uh, I wanted to talk to you about those today. Now the first thing first I guess is to say that everybody struggles from, with this from time to time. You know I'm a journalist, I write all the time, I do find it easy-ish to get writing but there are times, particularly if I'm writing about a subject that doesn't come naturally to me, I would maybe struggle a little bit just to get going. Once I'm going I'm usually okay and that's the key really to get going and keep going so I'll talk to you about that in a minute. So. I just want to say don't panic if this is something you struggle with. Just have a listen to what I've got to say and see if you can put anything into place that's going to give you a little bit of a hand. So, tip number one is what I've referred to already really, just to get going. Don't worry too much about what you're writing or how you're writing it. If you're really stuck, just get some words on the paper. Even if it's just bullet points to start with, just get going because once you start that, you'll find that the flow starts to come and you might you may stop and start a little bit, but if you're writing without worrying about the spelling or the grammar initially, then you can just do it. You can just write and not be worrying too much about it and get on with it. And that's a really good tip. Just sit down, get going. Along with that goes just write one sen sentence at a time. You don't have to write the whole blog or feature or email marketing copy all in one go. Just write a sentence at a time, take a break, have a think about what you're doing, then go back to it. And it might take a little bit longer, but it just means that you're you're getting going. At least you're getting going and you're not just sat pondering, um, which obviously is not going to get you anywhere. So one sentence at a time and just let it flow. Second thing I want to talk to you about is doing some research. Now, mostly when we're writing about things, particularly for our own business, we know a lot about what we're about to write about. In fact, you're probably an expert in your niche, which is fine, obviously. But it pays to do a little bit of research anyway, because the more confident you feel about what you're about to write, the easier it will be. And particularly, just look at what other people have been writing. Not to compare, you're not comparing style or how they write or how good they are. Just have a look about what they're um, writing about. See if there's anything you think you might miss when you write about a similar topic or you know, research how differently you're going to have to write it to make it stand out from what your competitors are doing. So just a little bit of research, you know, 15 minutes is enough, more if, if it's a subject that you're not overly um, knowledgeable about, but it just makes you a little more confident when you get round to putting your fingers on that keyboard. So I'll give that a go. Internet research is easy to do, as you know, so um, try that. The next thing to talk about, uh, tip number three, are we on number three now, is to practice every day. So even if you're not having to write that week or that month or that day, practice. And what I would do there is write about, not about your business or about the hobby that you're writing about or any of that, just write about what you've done that morning. You know, so say, I mean, you say you're going to write 250 words every lunchtime for a month and just talk about what, you, what you've done that morning. You know, what you had for breakfast, what you first did, did you exercise, how was it, how did you feel? And that is just so that you get used to forming words and sentences and paragraphs and putting them into some sort of order. And it's easy if you just write about something you've done already because you don't have to think too much. You just need to you know, write a little log about what you've been up to. And if you make it 250 words, that's nothing. It's hardly any words at all. So you should find that pretty easy. Or maybe write about a hobby, you know, if you're really, really keen on something, you know a lot about it, just write 250 words on that every lunchtime and just get into the swing of getting the copy on the page. 
So this next tip is something probably that you've heard before, but it's a, an oldie but a goodie as they say, and that's to get out of your normal working space. Most of us work in a, in a small room in their own house if you're a freelancer, or you might work from your shop if you're a business owner, or you know any other number of places. But if you take yourself away from that space and go somewhere else, that can really help just to, to open up the, the creativity in your brain. So go to a cafe, or a co-working space, or hire a meeting room in a museum or if you're lucky enough to live near a beach and the weather's nice you know, go sit on the beach with your laptop and write from there you would be amazed how much that does help it just sort of changes the scenery I guess and changes the ambiance and the feeling about the place and that can really help so I would I would definitely give that a try I often go to I've got Costa Coffee about three minutes walk from here a really big one so it's never full and I go upstairs, get a comfy chair and write from there. And it also helps because what I do is I don't ask for the Wi-Fi code if there is one. I just don't in, put myself on the internet at all. I'm just there to write. And that means I don't get distracted by Googling and Facebooking and looking at my Twitter. I either leave my phone at home if you're feeling brave enough or take it with you, but just leave it in your bag or in your computer bag or wherever and don't look at it. Just commit to writing for those one or two hours that you're there and that can really do the trick so give that a go. So I'm a journalist and the one thing that gets me writing is um, a deadline. Obviously I used to be an editor um, so all my staff and all my freelancers would be working to deadlines and you know they had to hit their deadlines or have a really good excuse why they weren't and that couldn't just be that they were off sick it had to be that you know, the, we couldn't do the photo shoot that went with the feature because it was pouring it down, or the expert they were working with, uh, it couldn't make it any any longer, and they had to reschedule. But it really was, you know, we've got to hit this deadline because the magazine goes to press on a certain day, or a newspaper goes to press on a certain day, and if you don't get to press on that day, the payment that you have to make for that is quite a lot of money. And I wasn't going to be the editor that had to tell my publisher that we needed to pay a lot of money to a printing company because I'd missed press day. That was not going to happen. So I try to do that now, even though I'm a freelancer and I have a little more flexibility. I always give myself a deadline when I'm writing a blog or a feature that I want to pitch or a email copy to go out to my subscribers or a Facebook ad. I will make the list of what I need to do and when I've got to have it done by and I set that as a, a deadline that I'm not going to miss and I would suggest you do the same obviously because I'm a freelance writer who still writes for magazines and newspapers I still get a, a deadline set from editors that I'm working with so I'm still in that swing of being in, you know within the deadline situation but if you're not doing that and you just got your own work to write I would still set a deadline or be accountable to somebody tell somebody that you've got to write it and tell them when you're going to have it written by and ask them to keep checking in with you it could be a friend it could be somebody you work with um could be an accountability coach i offer that service so anybody really just tell them that you're you've got this to do because that will really sharpen the mind if you've got to email them or pick the phone up to them and tell you haven't you haven't done it then that you know, can be a little bit embarrassing. So give yourself a, a deadline and be find an accountability buddy. So if you're an inexperienced writer or somebody who doesn't write a lot, one of the things I would suggest is not to leave it to the last minute. Um, I'm pretty good at writing the last minute. Um, that's just sometimes how I work. I'm better when I've got a little bit of an adrenaline rush going on. But I've been writing for, well, since as a journalist since 2003. So that's a long time. And, you know, I'm pretty good now at waiting till the last minute and then having a panic and getting it down. But I wouldn't suggest you do that if you're not an experienced writer. Give yourself plenty of time and just take it steady and don't panic. Planning what you want to write is a really good tool as well. And I don't spend, I wouldn't spend a lot of time on this, maybe 30 minutes, but I would plan out the structure of your feature. What is the headline going to be? What's your introduction going to be? How many paragraphs are you going to write? What are the topics of those those paragraphs? And just very much in note form, get that down on a piece of paper. In fact, you could you could build yourself a little template that you use every time you write with those 
headings in, uh, what your conclusion is going to be. And if you plan it like that, you'll find that once you get around to writing it, because you've, you've done the structure already, you're not having to think about that, then hopefully you should just get your blog or your feature down without too much hassle. So make yourself a little pro forma and stick with that every time you write. Another trick I've learned quite recently, actually, is to record what you want to write. And by that, I don't mean, you know, read out the whole feature or the whole blog that you want to write about, but just something to get you going. So maybe you've had an idea for a blog, but you can't get that idea down on paper. So just record using your iPhone or whatever you've got. Maybe, the you know, the first few lines of your idea or the what you think about the introduction might be, and then... And then type it out and that'll just get you started um i mean if you want to you could you could try and talk the whole feature or talk the whole blog if that works for you and then write it from there whatever works for you but i just find that recording something to get you going is a really worthwhile thing to try so one thing i hear a lot of writers saying or freelance writers or blog writers is that they don't read very much and Again, as a journalist, this is something I would advise you to do, and that is read a lot. And read things that you might, other, in a different world, not read. Something that's a little bit about outside your sphere of um, knowledge or what you like to read about. Because you pick up so many ideas and you learn so much about the way that different people write and the words that they use, the style that they use. And the more you know about that, the easier you'll find it to write. Obviously, don't, don't read something that you hate so much that you're actually not going to get to the end of it. But, you know, magazine features, um, other blogs, books that you wouldn't normally pick up. Just get in the habit of reading a little bit more and you'll find that when you come to write, it flows a little easier because you've got an expanded knowledge about words and about phrases and about sentences and that can do the trick. So just get your hands on some stuff. Buy, promise that you're going to buy a magazine every month perhaps that you wouldn't normally buy and have a read of that and, and see if that helps you. So there you go. That's my top tips on how to overcome writer's block. I hope you found that useful. Let me know in the comments below or ask any questions and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I do try and answer every query that I get. So I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe if you're enjoying these little videos and uh, see you again soon. Bye everyone.